All right. Got to take her. Who's this guy? House Demir. Okay. Uh, this is a pretty weak hand. Um, I think it might be keepable, though, because we can go turn one, Nakatl, turn two, attack for five. Um, hopefully we draw into a three drop on our next turn. Or second turn would be fine as well. So let's look for a... I think we need a green source. So we're going to get a green red stomping ground. Play the dude. And then next turn we can fetch a um, temple garden. And get in for five. Depending on what my opponent does, of course. Now if they're on burn, which they appear to be. Ooh, no, it's goblins. So burn would really punch that start. Okay, so we're going to slow our roll a little bit here because there's really no need to go all in with that plan if he's got a chump blocker such as Mog Fanatic. But we are going for a forest. Hopefully get that courser going pretty soon. That'll be a good uh, roadblock for goblins. I have a feeling one of these hierarchs is going to eat the one damage from, from Mog Fanatic. But I guess I'm okay with that. As long as I'm left with one of them. Corsair is a pretty good, pretty good three drop to draw into. It allows us to kind of filter through the lands and also convert them to some life gain, which we will be needing in this matchup for sure. Yep, there's predictable play. Mog Fanatic used to be like one of the best red creatures in the game. Damage used to use the stack. And so you could put the damage from him blocking a creature on the stack and then sacrifice him to do an additional one damage to something else. So for example, if my Nakata was attacking as a 1-1, one, one, Mog Fanatic could block it, deal one damage to it, and then say, oh, by the way, I'm also going to kill this other thing. <laughs> All right, Goblin Guide is going to be a, um, something that we can kind of take advantage of knowing that we have... Our <laughs> Corsair around. I do like that. Let's see here. Bolt. Hmm. I am interested in that bolt, but let's put this Heath in play. And I think we can wait to decide how we're going to handle this situation, but it doesn't hurt to get in for three. Well, I don't want to set give him an opportunity to block uh, or to bolt my courser after I block with it. So I think I may save my Nakatl as my as my jump blocker here. Otherwise, the only thing that he can do to this courser is Goblin Grenade. But yes, I do believe we're gonna need that lightning bolt, especially if there's like a pile driver or a rabble master or something coming along. Legion uh, war boss might be. Worth killing. Fanatical Firebrand. Okay. Interesting. He looks more like a gorilla. <laughs> it's kind of morbid. He's got like fuses coming off of him, like he's going to blow himself up. I guess he does that. Legion Loyalist. That's what I was thinking of. Okay, so what does that do? That gives him first strike and trample. Can't be blocked by tokens. Which that token clause is gonna be relevant with his voice and reserve and hanging around. So he could pair a bolt and a firebrand to kill my courser. Okay, man. It's gonna be a long game like this. 
All right, there it is. Goblin Grenade. Um, I don't think it's time to pass up on that Lightning Bolt right now, so we're going to enjoy drawing it. Well, that's how his attack goes. Okay, so it's just the two. Yeah, so if I... I could take both of those creatures down by blocking as a 3-3, three, three, and then I think that would cause him to probably want to sacrifice the Firebrand and kill my dude. But I don't believe that's my plan of attack here. Put the regular old planes in play. I think I'm going to remain well what am I going to do here let's see we've got two cards in hand I think I can get aggressive this is going to be another one of those situations where he trades uh, my noble hierarch I'll just I'll save him to block Now, the nice thing about Goblin Guide is I can find out what's on top and I can decide if I want to fetch it away or not. Sorry about that. <clears throat> I do another land. That sucks. That deck probably doesn't want to see more than three. Lightning he likes. Oh, I like that. All right, so let's block. I'd be okay trading a wild Nakato for two goblins. All right, so now I can start attacking because I'll have two burn spells to uh, back up my, my defenses here. And Chalice of the Void would have been a good card to play. <laughs> I guess it would have stopped me pretty bad too. I'm going to save the Wooded Foothills in hand. There's really no need to play it right now. And I do play Tireless Tracker in this deck, as well as Courser. Obviously, we already saw the Courser, but other incentives to hold on to the lands. All right, cool. This is looking pretty good for us. I think we'll want to fetch up another red source at the end of turn if we can. Um... Maybe not. Maybe we save that for the tracker as well. We can get some major card advantage off of that and another fetch land here. Now, all this Rhythm of the Wilds nonsense has got me thinking about... Um, I'll put that into play. It's got me thinking about what Ponza could do with that card. I think, like, of all the creatures that I want to have haste, Primetime is is on the top of that list. And um, rushing from turn one to, to three drop via, like, Arbor Elf or Utopia Sprawl seems to be a good opportunity to play Rhythm the Wild into something like PN Karan or some other four drop the turn after. So... I don't know. I think I think it could be strong there. The the problem with the card being it's a non-creature card that goes in a deck that like wants to play a lot of creatures. So you're basically cutting um, your opportunities to use Rhythm of the Wild by including it unless you're getting rid of the other spells that are non-creatures already. And I don't think Ponza necessarily has the opportunity to do that. But maybe some, some version of that deck just becomes like a red-green mid-range that just basically ramps up quickly play some four uh four incidental blood moons um but plans on 
going the haste route. And I could be completely off topic. I have no experience with that that deck, but it sounds fine, like a fine plan to me. All right, four mana. Is this a Hazrat? That would be a problem. Five mana. Is this a Siege Gang Commander? Oh no, it's a Ramanop Ruins. Okay. It might be worth blowing up that second Ramanop Ruins if I have the opportunity, because he's just very low on resources right now. And I have plenty of lands. Well, I apologize. If we win this game, it's not going to be the most impressive. Oh, okay, here we go. This is what's happening. Create two four fours. I see. All right, I can pair a couple of bolts right now to kill one, but I think I'd rather attack into it. Um, let's put a red source out because we're going to be needing that. Just thinking, what would be the best draw? Actually, another Noble Hierarch wouldn't have sucked there, but I do like Knight of the Reliquary. In fact, that's really good. Knight of the Reliquary is going to deal with those guys just fine. Bet you won't block. Oh, he will. Okay. <laughs> um, and I don't see why I don't Helix here. Yeah, I think I do. Although that life gain is information um, that would maybe change his plan a little bit. I think it's still maybe worthwhile. All right. And for my next act. Ah, uh, no. Once again, I will save that land. Oops. need white source. I will save that land for uh, Tracker. Have the opportunity to find a red source if I absolutely need it via this Windswept Heath. But I don't plan on it. My knight is pretty much safe from anything he could do. He doesn't have a goblin out to goblin grenade it. And even if he did, I could sacrifice a land to pump it. If he attacks, that tells me he's got some kind of bolt. He doesn't. Ooh, Horizon Canopy is a good draw as well. So I think we get in for five, question mark. Okay, so now here's the here's where this math how this math works out. If I were to I'm gonna have to sacrifice my canopy now before before the damage is dealt so that he doesn't have an opportunity to pair a bolt uh, with the block. I guess he's not blocking anyway. But if that were the case, I'd want to sacrifice right away so that I could um, keep him alive from a bolt com uh, combined with that block. Because if I didn't do that, I could crack the fetch. He would go up to a 7-7. Seven, seven. Or I guess that doesn't matter because this is part of the cost. So never mind, I completely take that back. Let's see here, we're gonna play scavenger use. That should just about seal the deal. Makes my elemental a 4-4 four, four as well. Let's go ahead and exile something here. Doesn't really matter what. Alright. So my elemental token is pretty expendable, but it will trade with the elemental token that he has. All right, cool. Yeah, that was uh, that was a route right there. All right, Grim Lava Mancer is gonna be pretty good. I think I do want this whole Kitchen Finks shenanigans going on in this case because <laughs> what's he gonna do about Kitchen Finks Rhythm of the Wilds, really? 
Tyler Tracker can probably go in this matchup. It's not going to work very well when I'm trying to deal with, um, you know, just basically staying alive. Like, I don't think the card advantage is going to be a factor. Um, I do want Scoos. do want Grim. Let me cut a Blood Braid. Could cut a Rhythm, but it is so nice with Kitchen Finks. Let's cut one Rhythm. Three Blood Braids. Uh, Shalai will be friendly to us here. I think we're generally stacked up pretty well against that deck. I could even see the argument for getting rid of some of the mana dorks. In fact, I think I do. I think I get rid of one mana dork. Um, Fiery Justice is going to be a total blowout. But how do I make room for it? Hmm. Cut one voice. And we'll cut one blood braid. Alright, I think we'll stick with that. Now I'm kind of keeping these rhythms in for science. I think I'd probably be more interested in getting rid of more of those, but I I want to live the dream and set up the Kitchen Finks Rhythm of the Wild uh, combination. This is a terrible hand, definitely not keeping. This is a pretty terrible hand too. Um, what do we need to do with this though? We would need to maul and find a forest. Yeah, I don't think we can keep this either. One mana, one one Nakato there. All right, I think we have to keep this one. There's a third land. All right, so we've got a red source, we've got a bolt, keep us alive for a little bit. Hey, and we're gonna draw land. Thank you, Goblin Guide. Cool, I like that. Ooh, scavenging ooze, good guy. So yeah, here's where we can take some advantage of the Goblin Guide reveal again. Um, if the card on top is just so damn good that we can't uh, stand fetching it away, we could just take the two damage from the Goblin Guide. But I can't see many uh, things where that would be the case. All right, Burning Tree Emissary likely is going to be putting a Bushwhacker of sorts into play. So yeah, we're definitely going to need to bolt. In this case, though, we have much better targets for our bolt because I'd rather he have a 2-2 that reveals the top card of my library than anything else. Let's see what we got here. Fiery Justice. Oh, that is a really good card. Oh, are we going to see it, though? 6, 7, 8. That's 8 damage. We can't can't risk it. Unfortunately, this is going to require some shocking. I thought that was a Sacred Foundry. Whoops. Because that's okay. All right. Um, damn. I gotta play this. Scooze. I, I would like to play the voice. I screwed up. I thought I was grabbing a Sacred Foundry last turn. Not that I knew I was gonna draw a voice, but I'd much rather be playing a Voice of Resurgence here because I could be damn near Goblin uh, Grenade range if I don't block. I think I do have to block, save some damage, depending on what happens here. Like I said, if we if we have another Burning Tree Emissary Bushwhacker turn, we're in trouble. Okay, there's a Bushwhacker. No kicker, though. That is Goblin Grenade, fo grenade Fodder right there. Oh, there's the Bushwhacker. I see. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, so this guy is much better suited as a removal spell in this situation. Ooh, not a Nakaro. I don't want that crap. If only the wooded foothills were 
a windswept teeth would be okay. But I think we're just dead. Yeah, we are just dead. Okay, going on. Next game. That was a lot of bushwhackers. That's really hard to deal with. At least we get to go first this last one. Um, there's really no time for this Rhythm of the Wild stuff. Um, I think we cut one for another voice. We need that blocker. I'm tempted to play Path, but it's just so insignificant when it's just like 1-1 one, one creatures that add up. I think uh, Fiery Justice does a much better job of cleaning up the board, and Lightning Bolt having dual functionality of going to the dome, too. <coughs> I thought about Eidolon of Rhetoric in the sideboard here. That would be very good in this situation. Um, but without playing like any kind of like formal toolbox package, it's sort of hard to, uh, you know, make that work. All right, this is a little bit of a risky hand. I think I got to keep it though. I've got stuff to do. Shalai will be great when I can get that online. I've got a bolt for my turn one, um, or I just calmly fetch out a uh, stomping ground and go on with my life. Course is pretty good too. All right, that guy should probably just be dealt with right now. He's trouble. All right, ooh. I like that. Yeah, let's do that. Cool. All right, that also gives us the opportunity to play scavenging use with mana to gain life next turn. That's kind of nice. Ghost Quarter is pretty miserable in this matchup, but it's a necessary evil versus decks like Tron. So the cool thing is I can play Scoos and then leave up an opportunity to either shock or activate my Scoos. Hopefully we get a forest here, that would be nice. Or a fetch land will do. Alright, okay, shock land. I suppose at this in this case, <laughs> I may just go ahead and shock because the amount of damage that that Horizon Canopy will do to me over time is probably more than two. I suppose it's inevitable though. So maybe I, yeah, I guess I play the Horizon Canopy in this case. There's a bolt. Man, this just keeps getting more interesting. Um, yeah, we'll go this route. This scooz just might be a blocker, which I would be okay with. But then again, this Grim Lava Mancer just might be a blocker too. I guess we shall see. And by blocker, I mean a jump blocker. Best case scenario it becomes a 3-3. Three, three and my opponent is too scared to attack this turn, but I just don't see that this going that route. He's got six cards in hand. About to play a third land if he wanted to. That's uh, an opportunity to bushwhacker for sure. Or to bushwhack, I don't know. I don't know what the proper nomenclature is. Goblin Grenade. Huh. Okay, I guess we let it die. Okay, 
This is interesting. All right, so we can play Yield Courser. Hopefully there's a fetch land on top. That would be the best case scenario. Nope. Lightning Helix is pretty good too, though. So we're going to play the Stomping Ground at the cost of one life. <clears throat> this has been a very painful mana base. I don't think Shalai is right here, but I don't see why we don't play this guy. Yeah, I think we do. We need to start attacking pretty soon. Shalai is going to be very relevant, though, when our opponent has a goblin on the on the battlefield and we're at five life. Oh, he is flooding out bad. Fortunately for our opponent, though, we haven't been finding our lands by some time. All right, let's see. Oh, Aria Justice is so good. Okay. Yeah. Um, very tempted to attack. I think that that we have to start doing that. Well, let's see, he's got four cards in hand. No, not yet. Not yet. What's this? Bolt, Lava Mancer? Dismember? That's a Dismember. Dismember, Courser. Interesting. Okay. I respect that. Thought about a greater Garganon in here just for the uh just for the lulls with Kitchen Finks and Rhythm of the Wild. Huh. Alright, now I think we let that happen. I've got the bolt. It's tempting to just deal him two there, but definitely not right. See if we can trick our opponent into uh, unloading his hand. Two bushwhackers. Mm. This would be a pretty bad attack. All right, then. Bolt one and block the other. Came to life. <laughs> All right, now Shalai is pretty cool with. Uh, Kitchen Finks at a certain point, too. So once I reach six mana and it's relevant, we can really be going off. But I would be surprised if my opponent doesn't just concede right now. Oh, he doesn't. Okay. 
Let's get in for two. Oh, God, that feels pretty bad. This is a two for one right there. All right, Night of Autumn. More life gain. <laughs> so, Night of Autumn has been gaining four life and can trade with just about any top deck that my opponent could imaginably have. So, I think I'm okay with that right there. Perhaps just putting plus one, plus one counters on him is the better plan, but. I think I feel pretty comfortable at 17 life against that deck. Comfortable enough where I think I just attacked with everything here. And then even better, I should be able to kill him. So we can tap for a green, turn this into a planes. Three, four, five, six, seven. Oops. Well, let's use the green for uh, nothing. And well, he likes him. <coughs> All right. Well, I think that's a pretty good matchup for us. <laughs> But, um, I mean, it could honestly go either way. That, that die roll is going to be vital to that one because if my opponent has an explosive start like they did in game two, it could be completely different than that. But uh, we've got plenty of life gain to bring in and pl plenty of uh, removal to bring in for that deck. So I think the sideboard games are pretty heavily in our favor, if, especially if we're going first. So. All right, stay tuned. We'll do a couple more today. Um, and, yeah, see you, see you in a minute.